Hey, what's going on, folks? Lyra Packmaster Dog Training here. So I've talked about it before. I do a lot of experimenting with dogs, my dogs and clients' dogs, you know, a lot of experimenting, all different kinds of stuff, because I'm always curious on the outcome of, of things that that we believe or don't believe in. So I, I like to do some weird stuff sometimes to see the outcome. A um, couple of the last experiments I've talked about was uh, one with soak time, you know, where we take a break when we're teaching something difficult and we give the dog a little bit of time off. If you guys remember, the one thing I did last with that was with Luca when I was teaching him the uh, reverse handstand. You know, it's pretty difficult. You know, it's one of the more difficult things to teach or it can be. And, um, you know, I've always used soak time where we take a little time off, you know, a couple of days, sometimes even up to a week. But if you remember when I talked about it, my theory was what would happen if I took a really long time off, a whole month, what would happen? And I thought it would benefit the dog and, and it did. You know, after I think it was 30 days or, you know, about a month of not doing anything with him, the first time I brought him out near the wall where we were last practice, he went right into a perfect reverse handstand. You know, so I, I my suspicion was right there. The the longer time off from working on the difficult behavior really paid off. You know, it was pretty cool to watch. Um, the other thing was over about a six month period, I took in several dogs with dog reactivity issues. Okay, and so I wanted to see what would happen if I did no obedience, nothing at all, just took the dogs out of the environment and away from the people where the behavior was being created. And if I did nothing but take them in with us and no obedience training, okay? I had them around my dogs, but only on leash or in a pen for most of the time. And the extent of the training was a structured walk every day. That was it. Literally not a single obedience command. Um, I wanted to see what would happen. I had my theory on what would happen and I was correct. 100% of the dogs, and there were several dogs that we did it with, over a six month period, 100% of the dogs, the reactivity was gone. By the, by the end of the three weeks, there was no more reactivity. And, and I thought that's how it would turn out, you know? And again, there was no training. The extent of the training was a structured walk and just removing them from the environment that created the issues, all right? Um, now with Mango, I had another theory you guys see how I teach the, the formal healing, you know, like a lot of people do. You know, one of the things I do is I use touch pads and we teach the rear end awareness. Well, I didn't want to do that with Mango. I thought maybe we were wasting our time with that. And so I did teach her touch, you know, as opposed to place, but I never worked on rear end awareness. And I thought if we just spend time working on the formal heel and straight line position and coming, that everything would be fine. Well, I definitely failed there. I was totally wrong. 100% wrong. So her healing is nice, you know, going forward. She comes into position nice. She heals real nice. She's very attentive. Her head is up. She's in the right position. But as soon as I go to make any turns, it all falls apart, okay? And that definitely came from not working on any rear end awareness. So uh, I, I thought that it wouldn't affect the overall healing, but like like I said, again, I was totally wrong there. So at least for Mango, at least for my puppy, teaching that rear end awareness is really, really important. So yesterday, I just got back to teaching it, and the funny thing was, she knows touch, but like I said, I've never manipulated her to move the rear end at all. But when I did start to try to manipulate her using food with the hand lure, it was a disaster. It was, it was terrible. She just couldn't get the movement and kept coming off and there was no <laughs> there was no success there whatsoever and that usually doesn't happen you know especially in the beginning because we'll we'll click and treat for you know just a fraction of a movement of the rear end but she just wasn't getting it so with her because she has really good engagement and focus on me you know I tried something a little different instead of using the food lore or my hand I used my body position so I just stepped back away from the touch pad a little bit and I started rotating around the touch pad which allowed her to move that rear end maybe a half inch and I immediately clicked and, and rewarded with food you know and um, you know I did that probably three or four times to where there was just about a half inch movement clicked and reward and then from there I started asking for for more and literally in one session she was going completely around both directions really nice 
but I had to use my body position instead of the hand reward, you know, and, and uh, that's the first time I've had to do that. Usually the hand lure and with the food and manipulating the dog's position is pretty easy, but not with her. And so, uh, you know, I just, I know some of you were asking me how that was going. You guys knew I was giving that a try. So I just wanted to let you know it did not go well. I definitely failed on that one. So at least for, for my dog, I've only done it with, with Mango. So at least for the one dog I've done it with, teaching that rear end awareness is really, really important because it did hurt her heel very much so when I went to do any kind of turns, even though her straight line healing is very nice, all right? So if you guys are thinking about that or you're not using the touch pads to teach the rear end awareness for formal or competition healing, it's, it's you know, I think it's probably really beneficial for, for most dogs. Peace.